Welcome to Some Bits, where we decode the power school development experience. Some Bits is brought to you by MBA. Let's start the show. Welcome again, everybody, to another episode of Some Bits. As always, I am joined by Eric Scheidel and Ryan Cochran. For us listeners and viewers on the YouTube land, you see another face. Uh, Webster's Dictionary defines lazy as disinclined to activity or exertion, not energetic or vigorous. But in our world, we define lazy as Mr. John Dunleavy. John, welcome. Welcome to Some Bits. I see you are joining us with a little cocktail today. A little something, something for Some Bits. That sounds perfect. Today, I am again drinking the whiskey. Today, I'm drinking Old Forester's 1920. It's a delicious 115 proof bourbon. What about you, fellas? What are you drinking today? You're, right. pointing at, you're just pointing at a camera <laughs> Awkward there. Awkward silence. So the Wisconsin <laughs> boys uh, sticking with, I think I did this last time too, so forgive me for not mixing it up, but we got the Spotted Cow. Uh, anybody that's ever visited Wisconsin knows you can sell this stuff. It's it's, it's gold outside of the state because you can't get it there. So I enjoy it as much right. as I can. Field I state. have made my pilgrimage to New Glarus. I just made my pilgrimage to Eric's house. He's got pretty good stock. I I, I always have plenty to share. <laughs> well, I jumped on uh, the U.S. train here uh, and and uh, got a Lagunitas uh, IPA here. It's actually the first time I'm pretty sure I've had it, and it's a nice smooth one. Um, a little later, when that's finished, I might switch to my favorite uh, rye whiskey here, Lot 40. Um, out of all ryes that I've ever had, there's not a single rye I could pick out more than this one when you put it side by side of any glasses even if you pour it in and, and make the you know bastardization of throwing it with a little bit of coke or something like that i can still <laughs> pick it out it is just distinctive it is delicious challenge accepted and, uh, i recommend lot 40. <laughs> tons better than lot 38. <laughs> <laughs> don't even don't even bring up lot 36. <laughs> we're not talking about that yeah, uh, I don't know if to say, Ryan, you probably didn't even realize you were kind of giving an ode to to John by drinking Lagunitas today, but uh, they, they they are hailed out of John's backyard. Well, Petaluma and Chicago. Correct. The, the Chicago backyard, not the California backyard. In fact, it is close to where they film a lot of Chicago fire. I did not know that. Feared. I, I think you have some connection to said show. I do. Is that right? That's correct. Five so on IMDb. Actually, my <laughs> own daughter asked me, what was that episode again? <laughs> <laughs> Showing her new boyfriend. Yeah, so, so you our, were, uh, our, you were a guest in, appearance, yes. You what's will, that? Yeah, I was a guest, uh, guest spot on a show back in season three. So that's ages ago. In Chicago fire time. So, so is this like time that I can come back as another character now? <laughs> <laughs> if anybody put on a wig, out. yeah. <laughs> nice. Thanks so, were you? Our, was our this like a crashy old cop type role, or no? This was, and it, it works for us here. Uh, it was uh, the fire department fix it guy. So they come in with their mask and thing, and I'm just the old cranky guy. Yeah, I seen that stuff before. You know, that kind of crap. You guys take care of your stuff, and it'll work forever. <laughs> right? Right. So, do you, do you remember your lines from like everything you've ever done? Oh, yes. It yeah. was always. Uh, I mostly did a lot of stage work, and and my fellow actors were really pleased if I remembered the lines from the current show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so, gotta be a nice thing yeah. <laughs> so for the uh, for the listeners and viewers that don't that aren't aware of john he's multifaceted um he is an actor he's a voice actor but uh in our world he's he's been part of peace Sugs for a number of years he does work for a, a school district currently i do believe and uh been doing it for a long time and over the years he has become known as the lazy man of power school customizations and that's why we want to bring him on today uh today's topic is all about the lazy way of coding um so i mean i i guess to get started is you know really defining what that means right 
You know, yeah. there's a there tends to be a negative connotation, but John, you're pretty proud of the title. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you want to go into a little bit of what that means to you? Well, well, for me, um, I, I, on most of the classes, I have like a slide from Heinlein who, who said, uh, uh, the lazy man, I can't even remember it now, uh, mostly finds the, the laziest thing to do is do it right the first time. That way you don't have to keep fixing it, you know. <laughs> that feeds into page fragments and things. But it's sometimes but, easier said than done. Yeah. Uh, no, I've been I've been doing power school since 2000, and I was literally given a manual, <laughs> and they told me we got power school now, and you're going to run it. <laughs> a printed manual. That thing, that nice. exists. There's such it thing really as a printed existed. power school manual. That's true. Like, it it was provided from it, them. No, it was it was theirs. They delivered it. Wow. This was back in the 3.72, where their logo was uh God, I can't remember what the, the saying was, but it looked like an explosion coming out of a school door, which <laughs> you know doesn't really go over. <laughs> that wouldn't work these days. Yeah. So this is awesome, John, because I think you listened to our first episode where we talked about our background and when we got into yeah. Power School, and I think as far back as any of us goes is Power School Five. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that I know the topic of today's episode is is the lazy man approach, and we'll definitely get to that. But if you guys don't mind, I'd love to hear oh, Power School Three. Was this back when they were still owned by Apple? Like, what what, no, what was that world like? No, this was before they were owned by Apple. Oh, wow. Oh, I thought Apple was the original. Yeah, no, sure. no. Yeah. It was a couple of guys in a school district who put this together and started selling it back in zero year. <laughs> 1991. Right. <laughs> zero year. Yep. That's how we got that great uh, numbering convention. Yeah. Um, uh, when, when I first got handed the power school manual, uh, my boss said, well, they have this power school university. Uh, you think you need to go to it? It's just, uh, and I, I said, well, I don't know what I don't know. So it might be a good idea. <laughs> it could be helpful. <laughs> it was held in a high school just South of Salt Lake city. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so no, no, like you know, pools and no you know, luxury. So, so uh, basically, at this point, there's a power school had been a thing for nine years. Yeah, I mean, it 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 really took about three, four years to become actually a, a, an external thing. It was gotcha. more in house and maybe a few friends, and so probably four or five years, it started branching out and being sold as a, a serious product, and then we picked it up. In 2000, I went to this, and, and during that summer is when Apple bought them. Gotcha. So curious, John, what was your role at the district when when you were first handed the manual? I was a classic tech support guy, climbing okay. under desk and plugging things. <laughs> um, I was, yep. you know, I, I, I've been trying to work as an actor, um, and I had jobs, but my stupid kids wanted to eat every single day. <laughs> so I had to get like a, a full-time job. Yeah. So that's what I did. I started, you know, just doing tech work. Gotcha. Then I became the power school guy. So I had all of those skills you need for power school. I um, could do almost any accent, uh, <laughs> knew Shakespeare and, and, I performed on film and on stage. Um, other than that, I uh, was pretty good at math. <laughs> right on. Yeah, <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah that's basically. With computers. <laughs> yeah, about so, the same as me. Uh, mine was, you're good at numbers. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah, back in those days, this was uh, 4D. This was before okay. any serious. Um, Back when, before the custom web route, we actually had to change the core pages and then put a little tag at the top, no update, that said, don't wipe this out. Wow. 
<laughs> so if something new came down, you just had to do a diff and figure out what what was added and what what you wanted to keep. And <laughs> well, but but how did the insertion points work? <laughs> <laughs> the insertion point was on the HTML page. It was where the cursor was. That just was put the it right there. Point. <laughs> I'm curious. Was there just because over the years, as new new uh, companies have bought PowerSchool, did you being so early on there, as you guys had just adopted it, yeah. was there any concern when you heard Apple's buying it? Actually, no. The Apple Apple purchase kind of gave it like some weight. Okay. Um, you figured they'd get some actual development money, and it did. It really did, made the product move along. Um, immediately, the Power School University started getting better. <laughs> the, the next year, I think it was at Northwestern. The first year in Utah, you had to uh, get your own housing, wherever, find a hotel. Wow. At Northwestern, although I didn't have to get housing because it was a mile from my house, they got uh, the student dorms. <laughs> they stayed in student dorms in the summer. <laughs> so it, so, so you ate on a hot, did you yeah. eat on a hot plate every night? <laughs> no, yeah. it was it was classic college dorm food. <laughs> they uh they you know you go to the cafeteria and there'd be the the cereal bowl line and this you know just like just any French coffee. fries and hot dogs or <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh, it was pretty funny and then of course they kicked it up to where. And then started pricing it out because they added so much. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Uh, it was just really interesting. Uh, five was when they added, they, they went to Sybase. So we had an actual database where you could do things. And then they brought in Oracle. And then it was seven. I noticed you guys talked back on, on the first episode when the, the big change came. It was seven where they brought in the standard CSS that changed the, uh, the pinstripes and everything. Yeah, yes. the inline CSS, yeah. I Actually, I didn't know. I always thought it went from 4D to Oracle. I didn't realize there was uh, yeah, something in between. The same thing. It was Sybase. So I mean, it, was a, it was a real sequel thing, but it still was kind of kludgy. Uh, I just want to say that I did know that. <laughs> not that it's relevant. <laughs> me too, me to too. Point out that I knew something that uh, that's probably that about when you started, right? What's that? I said that's probably about when you started. Yeah, I mean, I started in five. You yeah, said that, that when was they were. Were they? I thought well, I thought they were on Oracle when I started, but uh, they may have maybe, brought uh, Oracle in at the end of five. You know, I don't know which version. Yeah, depending on when I started. Now, now, Marsha Bretter Associates, the company that I came in with working in PowerSchool, was just switching over. Apparently, PowerSchool at this time, tell me if this rings any bells, John Dunleavy, sassy. Does that student information system ring any bells? Oh, yeah. That's for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were, well, they were going to rebrand it as, as PowerSchool Enterprise. This was a, a big fail project they did. <laughs> And, and they were trying to bring in uh, San Diego, Chicago Public, uh, just didn't, did not uh, scale up like they thought it would. Uh, I just remember when I had come in, the uh, MBA had just gone through this major conversion to supporting school districts, which they'd always done, but they were just learning the power school side of things. We were only in the state of Wisconsin at that time. And apparently all of the sassy customers were going to power school because it had been purchased. Yeah, I think uh, the sassy was the uh, Wisconsin system, basically. And then they decided to go to power school. Um, yeah, I definitely but, heard the same thing. <laughs> yeah, the idea I, I actually met with the, um, the computer uh, head of Chicago Public when I was working at the um, Noble Street Charter because we were using PowerSchool. They wanted us to use the CPS product. And then <clears throat> PowerSchool came in and was trying to sell them a new product, which they had given them money. And I'm like, this is not gonna merge well. <laughs> <at all." laughs> so uh, backed away from that. Understand. Um, yeah, I, I mean, 
all the things they've done, they've added, it's been good moves generally. Uh, you know, it went from uh, 4D to Sybase to SQL. So yeah, Sybase still had a, a limit. And I think that was from, from some 4D uh, power school programming that was hanging on. So the number of, of fields in a table is still restricted. Um, 99 custom fields, right? How, how do I spell Sybase? 999. 999, gotcha. Based on three-digit table numbering, because it would break things. <laughs> but then... Uh, uh, well, then at least is that, is that where the table numbering came from? That was the early table numbering. That's why it was, you know, and that had an effect on the 999. Okay. Yeah, what do we do with a how, how do I spell Sybase? <laughs> S-Y-S. Uh, Sybase. S-Y-B-A-S-E. Sybase. Ryan's doing some research. Yeah, yeah he's trying to find out all about it. Don't look at something new. Yeah. I want to find out. Hey, uh, it was in Gumball Rally. The first rule of Italian driving: what's behind is not important. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't sound like anything new. You need to worry about there, Ryan. No. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious. <laughs> sure. So I, I really did enjoy your uh, your quote to to define lazy, um, but uh, you know obviously that is kind of defined your way of of customizing. You, um, you know what what other characteristics would you you know kind of put on the lazy way of of customizing? Well, one of the things people have done my piece on lazy man's guide to customization no is I suggest and it's really about reaching out to the people who are scared of HTML, you know, because right. a lot of the smaller districts, it's a secretary who's doing it. And, yeah. and I really like to, you know, you, you talk about that. They're not going to write Angular. Um, <laughs> so I, I always talk about, ask yourself if a change really is needed here or is what's in the product going to do the job, you know? Think right. think about it. Then you say, as, as many people, did someone already make it? Let's use those tools. Let's find out what we can do and just slowly start to don't. I see a lot of people jump in and do a lot of stuff and all of a sudden it's all broken. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no idea what actually broke it. <laughs> yeah, that's not the lazy way. I'm slow but steady. Uh, I always you've got to have like the, uh, the superintendent level buy in because every single school in a district wants it different. Sure. You know, and you can do that, Very but true. it's really helpful if that's limited. <laughs> sure. You know? Just, you know what? You're that I never even thought of it that way, but it's true because that, that echoes from where I came back from. Yeah. And it, it, it was really the senior uh, administration level um, that enabled us to not go completely crazy. Yeah. That, uh, you know, we were like, okay, you know what? There's There's 13 schools. You need to come on a consensus. And if you don't, we will. <laughs> right. Well, I, I often keep saying you don't want people thinking they're getting a different education at a different school inside a district because, you know, oh, they're on the wrong side of the tracks. Right. <laughs> you get a lot of neighborhood envy going on, which that's not a good thing. Oh, and where that can get super fun is when you start working with uh, dioceses. Oh, Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, here in Wisconsin, we've done a lot of work with the Archdiocese of Green Bay, the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. They got, they've got schools all over the state, but they're all the same implementation. It's the same, I'm going to use my air quotes, district here. Right, but, right. A district mm -hmm. is a collection of schools. It's not geographic. It's not, it's just a collection. Yep. Whatever you have. I mean, I know that some have been, you know, and I'm sure you you have to deal with them large collective groups that really want their own implementation, but they use one server. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting. I guess that's where you have to come in, Eric. You've got to do all the differentiation. Oh, it's it's entertaining some days, yeah. let me tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, past, nowadays that falls more on Ryan's lap than it does Eric. <laughs> yeah. In the past, I've split in those kind of collective groups i've had to split out 
districts because yeah. they, one of their schools or two of their schools wanted to leave. <laughs> there, there, there's um, a sure. weekend oracle. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I um, when I was at Noble Street, they they kept I, they hired me. They had three schools; two were brand new, and they hired me because they knew they were going to expand. So I came in, they said, we're going to expand. Once we get above, you know, five, six schools, we're going to give you help. So I finally left there when they were at 17 <laughs> and there was no extra help. But, wow. um, and one of them was a school that took over another charter school that kind of died. And they had power school on a separate server Mm. But hadn't done rollover for three years. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh wow! <laughs> so how, 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 how can possible? you function? Is it, it, yeah, I had to come in and just do some <laughs> surgery. You know, a little little investigative. Well, what can we do here? Who's what? And and it just took about a month just to get their server to a point where I could then export the data and bring it into our server. It was ugly. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> So yeah, um, uh, that's that's usually when a district is is saying uh, maybe we need to look at a different SIS because this one's not working for us. Yeah, even though it's our own fault. They that throw away all that old data. <laughs> yeah, losing. Just start new. Bunches and bunches of stuff. That's so great. not to mention the retraining. I mean, I've talked to districts, <laughs> and I know change is tough. But it, so this, I'm sure sometimes it's right to rip the band aid, pull the yeah. plug, and go to something bigger and better, but. You know, I've talked to districts where I'm not going to drop any names. They they've changed, decided to switch SIS away from Power School because oh, we got a new superintendent that came from a district that used this other sys, and they really like it. And yep, I mean, not just the retraining of your staff, but the turnover, right? I mean, it always in, yep. involves a few people going, ah, uh, you know what? I'm two years away from retirement. I am not. It's not worth it. I'm not learning <laughs> a new one. Yeah. And, and that yeah. honestly, right there is a challenge. I think every every power school administrator faces administrator faces in every district because every two years there's another person in that exact same situation who's making the same argument. So it's just kind of like, when does it stop? <laughs> I don't think it does. I don't think it. No, does it stop. doesn't. <laughs> you know, you guys are are out of the school pain, so you just solve immediate problems. Um, the year to year stuff, you know, this year uh, it's been, you know, chopping up stuff constantly all during the school year. So uh, I've been <laughs> trying to keep my lazy man eyes focused. Uh, <laughs> it's tough. You know, they created one schedule and then threw that completely out and created another schedule all in the month of July, well, July and August, as school was opening in late August. I, th I think it would be worth uh, worth talking about, you know, you we're talking about, you know, kind of defining and stuff, but I, I think it's, it's worth noting, you know, because you do live that lazy man way, especially with the, with the era of COVID, you know, what kind of things have you found out there that you've been able to, to kind of deal with the quote unquote lazy way? Huh. Well, it's not been a lazy year. Um, <laughs> have uh, you worked more this year than you have in the last 10? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've had to restructure several times during the year. Yeah. You know? Well, that schedule's well, not going to work now. we got to yeah. redo the whole thing. Just, just okay. to quickly interject here, like definitely one thing we all noticed on the forums, like on the PSUG forums, was everybody trying to figure out how to track uh, with tracks the uh, cohorts and everything. I mean, that was a huge conversation from yeah. every different side of power school. Um, and I'm sure you had input in on it at some point or at least adopted part of it. And there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we looked at the track solution. Uh, it didn't actually work for us. Um, basically, right now, uh, we're tagging a kid, whether they're hybrid or remote. We're not. And, and we've only done hybrid for Two weeks so far, that was back in the fall, two weeks, and then it crashed again. So, <laughs> like I said, we've created all these different schedules yeah. to fill this, but... Um, it's always changing. You're going to need and, an interesting query at the end of the year to put everything together. <laughs> yeah, well, I've kept the, the attendance part pretty simple. 
by uh, basing it. And I looked at some of the tools um, in Illinois, our user group, Tejas Ambani, great coder. Uh, he put oh, together Steel, yeah. that allows us to just, um, you can tie it into the calendar or the teacher itself can pick, you know, all these kids are in person or all these kids are remote or can do it in between. So that's what we went with. Um, still had to retrain the teachers in the middle of the year on what to do. And many of them aren't doing it right. I, you know. What a surprise. <laughs> not not against you, but. That, uh, I'm going to give the state the best info I got, but it's not going to be right. Or at least not what they expected. Because, you know, they're asking for absurd stuff. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you're alone in Illinois on that. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so that's I, I definitely feel sorry for the states that started the school year without any real direction from the state. Yeah. And then the state decides in like October, November, OK, this is the data we need you to provide. That's exactly what Illinois did. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that makes it real rough. Um, I did look at Eric's plug and that's a nice thing. Uh, was going to steal some pieces from it. And then our admin said, no, we don't want to use that. I showed them it all, put it on a test server and showed them everything. Now, now they're asking me, can we use that? Well, we can, but we have to change what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things where do you tell them what's possible because this could open up a can of worms? <laughs> yeah, right. Another just, part of just because it's possible doesn't mean it's worth it. Yeah. You don't have to tell them everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, if you take anything away from this episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. We we're talking about the lazy way and how it developed. Um, I, um, like I said, started way back when, went to a few power schools, and then they did the um, ALS, the Advanced Learning uh, so that's right. what it was called from that other episode when I was trying to remember, by the way. Right. Advanced Learning Summit, right? You got it. I still have a couple of ALS shirts and things. But uh, I always said that really was kind of the core that became Peace of Life. Because all of us, the first time we met people across the country, we all only knew each other from the old Yahoo group. Right. We knew people who posted good stuff. And people who were crazy. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes they were the same person. <laughs> they were the same. Um, I definitely, I am, um, I think I am the true lazy man because I am at the lower edge of understanding coding. But I understand logic and how to get people to do things. So I have stolen from Roger Sprick and Jason Treadwell and uh, Matt Friend. God, there were a couple others. Uh, Dean Dolvang, he was a riot. Um, this was the early ALS group. Tejas. Tejas and Bonnie was in that first ALS class. Was Lorenzo? Was Lorenzo <laughs> there? I don't think he was. By the time I was... Well, going, yeah, he, he was wasn't one of them. He was, he was I knew truck. him and Jason became buddies early, and they started doing work together. Um, is, is this where where locker management came from, John? Am I thinking locker the right thing? Locker management came out of Augie. Augie, that's which was right. A, our first user group version of ALS. And and once people did that, then the idea of creating PSUGs kind of developed. I haven't yeah, heard so of a Augie bunch of, before. of the high end coders got together for Augie out uh, in California with Roger Sprick School. And that's what uh, lockers came out of. Um, what so can, can someone explain Augie? I just don't Augie, know it was advanced user group something blah blah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they, they wanted Very to familiar with blah blah. So it so was it could show their admin and it, it only charging like three hundred bucks or four hundred bucks. Can we pay for this? You know. Okay. So it created a letterhead and. <laughs> I don't remember. I bet you could look it up on PSUG. Uh, we made a different Augie channel to talk about that because we were also aware at the time of uh, not putting dangerous info in front of users who shouldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> we could open up a separate channel for Augie. Uh, 
That was a long time ago. For those users that knew enough just to be dangerous, right? Right. right. And and now I I sit and get notes. I'm 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 the Uber boss watching over PSUG.io and telling people don't don't post that. Don't post that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and can we just interject real quick and say thank you? <laughs> <laughs> I have finally uh lassoed a bunch of the other hands <laughs> the <control laughs> manager. Um, <laughs> And, and here's the real scoop, because I am giving up my title June 30th. I am retiring. Oh, wow. Big announcement. Wait, 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 wait. You're retiring from your school district or you're retiring from PSUG.io or both? Yes. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, that's that's great for you. That's terrible news for the rest of us. Right. But the other the other announcement for here is, so I may be available for development if anyone watching needs a guy. <laughs> hey, we'll link you to your IMDB. You got your resume on there, too? There you go. And I can also do commercials. Um, I am sag after. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Congratulations, John. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Sorry to hear yeah. you're going. No, it was one of those things. Um, Who's taking the torch? Uh, actually, I took over from Brian Andel, uh, PSUG. Um, he went to power school and said, I have to be hands off here. So he asked me if I'd do it. And then I, you know, as, as Yahoo started falling apart, I moved, moved it over to PSUG IO with Lakita. She was uh, a PSUG Midwest uh, attendee who got all fired up about the uh, dot io groups which has actually been pretty good it's a good platform um yeah. and then we got other people involved uh, i remember one of the first i i was at first vegas psug when we were we were at um the riviera which was a lot of fun uh the roller derby was there <laughs> wow that was before my time yeah you should get uh, Bob Coriacoli to talk about the roller derby girls partying in the pool <laughs> below his window. He's so cool. Oh, <laughs> that would be God, worth it alone God, for an episode. People. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't yes. believe. <laughs> Say, if we do an episode with Bob, it's just going to be three of us on mute and just let him go. <laughs> uh, well, that's how you ask him about that first peace hug and the roller derby girls. That'll get him going. <laughs> we'll be coming for you, Bob, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, yeah, that first one was fun and crazy. Uh, the next one, uh, it was maybe the second one or third one. I, I lured in this, this young lad that lives out in the distant woods off of civilization. I referred to him as Grizzly Adam. <laughs> the psychologist <laughs> and he's become somewhat useful since then we're talking larson <laughs> oh, sorry, i think he's uh he's kind of close to you right that's grizzly adam yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh adam and i were having a conversation about uh perhaps uh having him be a some bit guest one day and i told him man if he comes on I'm going to have to grow a beard or I'm going to be the odd man out. At least with Dunleavy and, and myself, we've got some balance here visually. <laughs> yeah. But if Larson comes on, it's, I'm just going to be weird looking. <laughs> I'll say with John, the, the years of experience holds true. That's uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So if I can springboard off something you said earlier, because this is something that I just, I really ascribe to and, and I don't teach a class. I've never taught a class at a PSUG, uh, you know, called the lazy man. But I do teach beginning customization. And I always tell people, and you use this exact term, which I love, rule number one of customization is don't build it if you can steal it. And I'm using my air quotes here when I say steal. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, along those lines, so so I'm sure we have a lot of listeners who are who have been in the power school world for a long time. And know the answers to this question, but what do you tell people? You know, don't build it if you can steal it. Okay, well, where? Where? And that's part of my lazy man thing. We take them through Power Source, take them through a couple other places like uh, Parati's webpage. Uh, you know, a couple things 
that uh, <laughs> that was the other thing that the local knowledge has learned about and we share it. <laughs> the tribe. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the whole lazy man thing is slowly building up to, and then we, we customize a single page and then the big piece, I show them a page fragment and then how to, you know, that one piece, how to change more too. You know, it's fairly simple, but conceptually that's a tough thing to get across to people. You right. know, the idea that you can change something over here and it shows up over here. And is that well received? I mean, do you oh, see God, the, the, the eyebrows go up oh, when you're? Yeah, yeah. There are people go, God, I've been trying to figure this out for years. You know, I just back it down to slowly. You know, we will go into a page and make a change and then do this. And then we add a page and do, do it. And then I add a link to more too, just through the HTML. And then I add an ink with a page frame, a link with a page fragment. So it's just piece by piece building the blocks, you know, and and they can keep the the slideshow so they can go back and look at it later. So I, I really think it helps. Like I said, the the newbie, brand new to power school, it's easy. You can do it first. Like I said, we just show you mm -hmm. here's something cool. Click that button, then you've got a customization. <laughs> <laughs> I've imported. Uh, and can I just say that I love that that your lazy man approach, it, 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 at first it almost seems contradictory. Like, it, no, the lazy way to do it is to just add the link in more too, right? Yeah. But this is what you alluded to at the beginning of the session, which I love, is like, no, I'm doing it the hard way today because I'm lazy. Right, right. Right? That's what I mean, I take them through, you know. Uh, boy, you know, because – I had to go clean up a lot of very lazy pages once we find whole point exactly. Too lazy. Right? Absolutely. That's yeah. what is too lazy. It's that balance. Yeah. You know, there's still probably some out there that I, you know, no one's ever yelled and I haven't touched it. So, <laughs> in fact, I was working on one today. I just saw it because I went in to change something today and went, ah, that stuff's still there. That shouldn't be there. You got any string key not found on your server, John? Uh, if there is, it's on a page I never go to. <laughs> oh, great answer. Good answer. So, Good answer. <laughs> you know, it, it, they pop up from time to time, especially when they pulled out SuccessNet. And, ah! <laughs> you so know, one of the other things I'm thinking about is just yeah, being lazy, too. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. You go for it. Uh, uh, I, I was saying that Pearson, uh, of all the owners, Pearson put in a lot of money, but they were horrible about a lot of stuff. They put a lot of crappy code that you have to find it and stab it. <laughs> like some of the stuff is going to stay labeled Pearson because it's not worth it to change it. Right. You see that, I'm sure. You still see Pearson, you know, behind the scenes, not up front. Pearson labels all over. For sure. Uh, 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 no, I was going to say, it's like, I mean, my favorite part about lazy, and this is almost something you learn Right when you're learning how to do do the development is uh, the cut and paste, wow. and the copy and paste, and I, I, I mean, you know, really putting it down to the 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 very essentials of it. Um, <laughs> it's it's you know when you're talking about the secretaries who sometimes have to fill in that role of yep. of the power school administrator, they don't realize they have that skill already that translates because they're used to cut and pasting when they're doing emails and form letters and everything. But then when it gets to code, they're like, well, what do we do with all this? Cut and paste. Well, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another piece of my lazy man. When I'm showing them stuff here, you know, I shine it on the screen and I say, we want this code. So I go copy and then I switch to the other screen, paste. <laughs> That's how you get the code. <laughs> Did you just see that word where it says, uh, you know, the tab name, whatever? Change yeah. it. There you go. <laughs> or, or the first time I show more too. Find out where you want to put it. Put in a couple of returns so there's an empty space. Then copy the line above and paste it there and then change those two words. You're done. <laughs> done. Ta -da. You know, you slowly show them little gimmicks and things that just step them up Ooh, and then step them up and then step them up and then you I'm say not look, do the okay. lazy man way to angular not gonna happen <laughs> unfortunately <laughs>
<laughs> well, I mean, if you gave it one more year, you could get there. I could. <laughs> get that hot crazy. Do I have to? No. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of interesting, John. That it seems like your your teaching or your teaching style is is just a, a very beginner way of 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 learning and and teaching these these yeah. concepts, but. I think just adding the term lazy man to it makes it more approachable and people are more open up to it yeah. because, you know, if, if, if you're going to talk about beginning customizations as a class, well, I don't know anything about customizations. I don't know about coding. I can't do that. So I'm not even going to take the class, but a class yeah. that says yeah. the lazy man's way of, of customization, I, I'm lazy. Maybe I can learn something out of this. <laughs> well, it almost lowers people's shield. Yeah. In a way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and think about when you see beginning, customization, intermediate, advanced. They go, i got to spend that much time on it? No, <laughs> it's still class. You yeah. know, so, it just means, okay, there's more. <laughs> it, it, who's going to take on the mantle of lazy man then after this year? Yeah. So are, are you expecting someone to, like, you know, inherit well, that? Well, someone does. I get royalties. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I this see isn't here. acting. It, it, it says it's power school. <laughs> No, no. There's a really good question, though, my friend. Yeah. Does retiring from PSUG IO and from your school district mean retiring from PSUG? I don't want to know. I probably keep going to PSUG if it ever meets again. Good answer. Yeah, time will tell. <laughs> yeah, we can. Well, we need hope. you up on the front. We need you up on stage, though. Yeah, that's true. I'll do. A, I'll do. I'll do some stage shows instead of instead of the same comic. <laughs> 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 Give me a little uh, stab at Joe right there. <laughs> oh, I love Joe. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question for you. Here's one that's come across my desk a few times in my career. We're talking about the lazy man way is uh, as people come to me and say, hey, I need you to build me this customization. And so I told you rule one of my when I teach customization is don't build it if you can steal it. Uh, rule number two is don't customize it if it doesn't need to be customized. This is kind of something that you alluded to earlier, but in the sense of like, so so someone came to me and they said, hey, I got this really easy one for you. I just need this this label changed for this field on the general demographics page. Yeah. Can you go in there and customize it for me? No, no, I can't. There's a function for that in PowerSchool. That's what text translation's for. See, I would have said, sure. I'd be a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another challenge is knowing what requires a custom solution versus a, another one just came across my desk last week. Hey, can you help me out? I'm trying to figure out how to customize, uh, put a message on the login screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find an insertion point. Right, right. Yeah, they are hard to find. You know, um, they're, they're, no, there's see, a function for that built in. I just have yours in a different order. Don't customize it if it doesn't need customizing. Then if you have to customize, go find one. Right. <laughs> then I think that's if tough. You find one, then you start slowly building. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm always about like, ah, this has been done before. You know, I think that's, not, that's nope. what your, your PSUG IO is for, right? Yeah. It is so I can reach out to the community before I spend two hours looking for an insertion point on the login screen to say, hey, does this require customization? If the answer is no, great. If the answer is yes, has anybody done it? Right. right. Well, even better than reaching out, first you search, then you reach out. <laughs> it's probably there. It's probably already there. I mean, I still search it. I um. I, I still, half the time, I'll just Google HTML because I forgot the code I had. I, I used to pick on me. I said, well, I have to look up word spelling sometimes, too, because I, <laughs> ah, I can't remember it. I, you know, taking the uh, uh, advanced classes at PSU, um, Steve Deaver's class, it's like, I can't type. I am a terrible typer. So it doesn't matter. It's like, I understand the concept. I'm going to type it wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put a comma where it should have been a semicolon or, or a, yeah, you know. Or a B where there should have been an M or maybe the other way around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I can see where people get frustrated about that. I don't. I just laugh at myself. That's just typing. That's not understanding it. I can ha get someone to help me with the typing. Yeah, you know. that's different than understanding the logic and what's actually going on. 
Right. That's what I meant. I, I had logic before I started working on this. You know, oh, sequel. You if it makes you logic. feel any better, I tell you what, John, I wish I had half of the hours of my life back that I have spent chasing <laughs> down bugs and code that were not logic errors, but typos. Oh, <laughs> well, it's typos. You know, you have some good. Oh, that's so painful. <laughs> Sometimes they don't do it right. Um, what was the other thing I was thinking? Ah, I lost it. Oh, I know. I thought I brought something I wanted to share, you know, talking about saving time. This is a XKCD. How much time you can save over five years if you can. We'll send you the link to it so you can put it in. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's how much time if you say cut. Well, I got it up on another screen. Five seconds and you do a thing 50 times a day and you create a, a process that will save you five seconds every time you do it. Um, where is it? Over five years? No, where is it? God. <laughs> this is what Eric five referenced seconds, in our first episode. Say, yeah. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Please go on. Sorry, John. Oh, if you do it 50 times a day and you cut out five seconds, you save five days over a five-year period. <laughs> if you save That's a lot of seconds from a task. So trying to figure out how to make this task easier because you're going to repeat it forever and ever and ever, that's that's huge. Yeah. Excuse my French, but darn tootin'. <laughs> <laughs> well, for sure, one that struck me, and I think we did talk about this in our first episode, um, but I don't think I brought up this specific example, and it's not a super – I don't care if you're a hardcore – full-time programmer or a, a secretary at a school district, or if you just use a computer in your job, you know, I, I've worked with people and it's painstaking to watch them grab their mouse and highlight something and then right click and find the copy. <laughs> control you know, A, control A, like, control A, control A, control A, control, control, control C. C control and then you want to paste it as control A, control B. To the uh, file menu and edit, copy, paste, <laughs> oh yeah, that's the yeah, real. I, I just think that's the perfect example of what you just described, John. Is learning how to use the tools you have at your disposal. Use the right. tools that are there. Yes. Um, I yeah. I, I learning the keyboard is a, a great tool. Um, and and it's funny. I do training sessions with our school secretaries, and I try to come up with just one thing each time. One little thing. You guys can save time. You know, when, you know, show them control V and control C. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. But again, I think that, that goes right back to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what the, the best keystroke combination ever invented is, though? It's control Z. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I use that all the it's time. The, it's the oops. <laughs> <laughs> Go back up now. But then no. control Y, because there's that whole thing where you control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, to copy that piece of code that you deleted, and then the painstaking control Y, control Y, control Y, control Y, control y to make sure you don't accidentally hit any other key to overwrite the pattern. And then you control V, what you copied from all those control Zs ago. <laughs> yeah, well, now we're talking about saving time again. <laughs> yeah, right. But maybe the mouse was useful in that situation. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Life is good. No, I think that definitely goes back to, you know, a lot of times, you know, people like our, our listeners, they just don't know what they don't know. So without, you know, someone saying there is an easier way to do that, they'll never know. So it's nice you say, I know. know. Now you know. Yeah. So yeah. like again, in the, in the 15 years in the district that I was in, and same with you, John. Yes, like, you Eric got it. One PSU. I won a prize. I got a. What would I get? I think it was an iPad. Because I gave the suggestion of putting a folder in your browser bar of all the PowerSchool pages you go to all the time. You know, for someone in a school. You know, I, I have the remote login, you know, remote 
just right to it. I don't need to go through all the PowerSchool clicks and clicks and clicks. Right. And then PowerSchool changed their um, DNS again. Well, <laughs> I have to change all my clicks again. <laughs> right, we, it was PowerSchool. Aaron, and then it Aaron. went to Pearson and then it went back to PowerSchool. I was like, oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric's got a nice little trick for that using bookmarklets. Well, yeah. I, I, yeah, I do, and I, I actually can't take credit for that. That's a Schmadam Schmarson contribution. But uh, we're not going to give him any credit. Okay. No. Yeah. Sure, he's still in job. Schmadam Schmucken Schmarson. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. MBA has a product. <laughs> but what you refer to, yeah, so the, the Schmadam Schmarson is you can actually, I've got my bookmarks coded um, so that no matter what PowerSchool server I'm on, because we have hundreds of clients and I want to get to custom page management or I want to get to data export manager, I've got a bookmark coded that says, well, whatever your current domain you're on, stay there and go to slash the relative yes the customization well, slash brian, home. brian looks upset right now what's up i am upset because i've I, I try i chased that freaking dragon a while ago <laughs> and gave up and this yeah. is like three or four years ago but basically you're saying you can make your book bookmarks relative instead right. of absolute yeah. well i want so that <laughs> can tell you about your, this at your one year no. anniversary we'll give it to you I usually yeah. share that with all new hires. It's just that I don't like you. Yeah, I was going to say. Is it because I have hair? No, it's your accent. <laughs> More to the 49th parallel. Ugh. Yeah, I think we can uh, think we can still be PG-13 with one of those. <laughs> one of them. Oh, man, I've wanted that. I, I've wanted that uh, uh, thing forever. I've, I yeah. tried. I find it. I did things. I could never. Man, see, sometimes even the pros don't know what school. they don't well, know. That, there, right there, is the ultimate and lazy. Honestly, because now you don't have to have bookmarks to a million different servers. You have a bookmark to one path, and it'll get you to everywhere. Down there you street. go, Sean. Remind me, we should share that somewhere. Uh, I haven't figured out yet where we're sharing um, content, links, etc. But we can post that for our listeners. For sure. Yeah. I, I hope there's a lot of people out there right now going, whoa, wait. Yeah, I want that. <laughs> well, hey, they should be because that's a beautiful thing. Well, even even again, if it works in a district with like so one test <laughs> server, even right. if you have one test server in yeah. your own district, that's still beneficial. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so you answered the, the next the point that I was going to raise. I guess if I work in a school district, would I really need that? But right. yeah, maybe. Yep. It's possible if you go to I Power to School U or PSUG. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit like tingly over that. that, <laughs> that might I can't tell you. It makes my day that I made you tingle today, Ryan. See, again, <laughs> you made two seconds off of your daily tasks. It does. It totally <laughs> That's does. What all this computation is all about using it to. Well, yeah, like the, the plugin uh, management uh, console, the, uh, you know, DDA, you know, so, so oh, many pages. Yeah. Oh, and of course, I have the system logs, too, because anybody who writes yep. Keyless SQL knows you need to get to the system <laughs> logs. <laughs> to hang straight. You we can just figure out a way to go With back. Two thousand uh, list items. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, deprecated. Yeah, it's deprecated, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole topic for another episode. Yeah. As soon as they get rid of uh, HTML. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. I teach TLS SQL at some of my PSUG sessions, and I make sure to say it's deprecated and why. Yeah. Um, but the fact of the matter is to truly be deprecated, they'd have to remove support for it in the product. And then every That's customization awesome. ever written, along yeah. with every state reporting content page, would break. Yeah. So Definitely. I'm not holding my breath. There's no way. Well, that would be dumb if you did. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the opposite of lazy, right? That's just dumb. Yeah, don't do that. It's not worth it. Well, John. And to uh, clarify, John, it's strongly deprecated. Did we say strongly? 
strongly, strongly. Oh, all caps, right? It's bigly, bigly deprecated. <laughs> <laughs> you should trademark that term. Just like you have the lazy man, he should trademark strongly deprecated at this point. <laughs> I feel strongly deprecated after talking with you people. <laughs> and we have not even begun well, to deprecate you well, yet. Well, on that note, I think Sean Sean has a thing to say then. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, unless you guys got uh, something else to, to kind of go into, John, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe sometime in the future we can get you on again. Um, <laughs> maybe when I'm retired and have all my free time. There you go. Have all that free time. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. And everybody. Well, and, uh, everybody say goodbye. And then uh, I'll say goodbye. Eric, say goodbye. John, say goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, and then I'll say next time, next time on an all new Some Bits. We sit down with the executive producer of Some Bits, Alicia Onstead. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It'll be a good time. See you all then. Thanks for joining us, and a special thanks to our subscribers. Consider becoming one today. Enjoy more episodes and learn more at mba-link.com. Hey, hey, hey.